What's going on YouTube? This is Necrosteva and we are here with the Eternity City Enders for week 8 of the Pokemon Premier League. I do apologize that this battle is going up a little bit later than I would have liked it to, but now that I'm back from my awesome vacation, it is time to get back into the swing of things. Week 8 is up against the Celta Dino, who are coached by Onesie Bennett or Alex. I was actually pretty excited for this match. If you haven't been watching Alex's side of the Pokemon Premier League, definitely go do it. Um, he only has three losses for the entire league from number one, and the losses that he has had were really, really close battles. So I was really looking forward to the match. Now, in the um, if you haven't seen the analysis video, of course, I just put that up right before this, so go check it out. It's in the playlist. But you can see that I did end up bringing the Tyranitar and Stalin combination. Also went for an Assault Vest Regenerator Reuniclus just because he had several special attackers. And that was something that my co-coach recommended, uh, Aqua Clauncher. I did not end up bringing um, Encore Power Up Punch Lopani. I, I ended up doing a little bit more standard there with uh, Power Up Punch and Fake Out. Uh, and Garchomp is a really interesting spread because he has enough speed to outrun uh, something like a Max Speed Star Raptor. At the same time, he has mixed attack. I have mixed attacks on Garchomp and a newly bred Tyranitar who was shiny that I brought on the way back from my trip. I was really excited to read that one. Uh, and Tyranitar has mixed attacks too. With enough speed, just to outrun Hariyama, the rest in bulk. Um, and then of course, Stoutland has enough speed to outspeed a Choice Scarf Star Raptor, which he didn't bring with the rest in bulk. So I had the opportunity to live a few attacks a little bit more than normal while still outspeeding what I need to outspeed with this team. I was very surprised to see that he did not bring Star Raptor, Floatzel, or Vileplume, which means I probably won't have to worry about any weather shenanigans in the battle. Uh, he did bring exactly what I thought he would bring with Skarmori, Ampharos, Nidoking, and Yuxi though. Um, Hariyama was a little bit more unexpected, but I also wasn't very worried about it because I had uh, my my own psychic attacks with Reuniclus. Now I decided to start off really, really, really uh, offensive here, but he leads out with his Ampharos, and so I thought the switch to a Skarmori or even Yuxi was a little bit too obvious on the Earthquake. A Life Warp Earthquake is going to take out any uh, Mega Ampharos, barring a super bulky one. Uh, it turns out that he was just calling my bluff, and he was just going to go for Dragon Poles, thinking that I was sashed and try to set up some rocks or something. Uh, the switch out to Tyranitar is going to work out pretty well, just because the Sandstorm is up, and I do have a minus special defense nature but I am forcing him to rely on Focus Blast. I just go for Earthquake on the switch, hoping to put some damage on something. I didn't think he would switch into Skarmori right away, just because Tyranitar does commonly carry Thunderbolt or Fire Blast. Uh, it is nice to see leftovers on Seismitoad. I was expecting Infestation from watching his previous battles, and so I knew I did not want to switch right into Reuniclus, because that might be annoying. Um, if I switch into Kavagrigus here, I can hit him with the Will-O-Wisp to whittle him down, and uh, I can see what other moves he has if he's carrying Toxic or Protect. I will need to know that now while I have my um, Kafagrigus in here. Now the nice thing about switching in Kafagrigus here is that number one, I can burn him. Uh, number two, we can also see the rest of his moves. I was a little bit dismayed to see that he had Stealth Rock on Seismitoad. I was really hoping that he would have it on another Pokemon because now he basically has it up for free. And because I didn't put Magic Coat onto um, my Kofagrigus like I had before the battle, I actually switched it for Psychic because I really thought he'd be bringing Star Raptor and I wanted to not be walled by Star Raptor if I needed to hit it with something. Um, he also shows a knockoff, which I was not expecting on Seismitoad. That does a little bit more damage than I wanted it to as well. Uh, but I have Pain Split and I figure he would be running a lot of HP on his Seismitoad, so that means this pain split is going to split our HP, or pain split puts both of your HP together, then averages it for both of you. So I'm going to get back up just a little bit of HP here, and of course he loses a little bit, but more importantly, that allows me to live another hit from him. Now, it's a little bit of a toss up there, whether or not I should have just gone for the Shadow Ball. Uh, I went for pain split because if he did decide to switch out right there, expecting the Shadow Ball, I would have probably crippled something else's HP. Uh, but since he's at this low of HP now, I do want to go ahead and make sure I take him out so that he doesn't get off any annoying um, infestation protection shenanigans later on. Uh, and here, I really didn't want him to get switch in initiative. I could have switched out into Garchomp, but I did not want to risk him going for a Dragon Pulse. 
uh, because I didn't bring Reuniclus that allows him to go for Dragon Pulse a lot more freely. Now he does go out into his Hariyama and so seeing that I know I can take any one hit with my Reuniclus and he goes for a knockoff and holy crap that does a lot of damage. Man, was not expecting that much damage from Hariyama. And strangely, I actually don't KO him with my Psy Shock, which means I probably should have brought Psychic this week. But that's okay. I didn't want to switch out in case he just had a coverage move there. There's no reason to do so. And he does in fact go for Ice Punch, which means if I had switched into Garchomp or something weird, I would have taken a lot of damage there. But this is great because now I can go out into Law Punny. If he has Bullet Punch, his only real priority mode to use here, it forces him to use that to get any damage. Then I just decided to go for Power Up Punch to knock out Hariyama. This puts him in a position where he has to go out into something that's faster if he doesn't want to take a lot of damage. Seeing that he goes into an King confirms that it's Scarfed, and he goes for Focus Blast and misses, which is huge. He probably would have taken out Lopunny there in a single hit, but since he did lock himself into Focus Blast, that would have given Garchomp free reign to switch in as well. Um, if he uh, he also switches into Ampharos after he misses with his Ninniking and misses a Focus Blast. Um, and that allows me to put a ton of damage onto his Ampharos. Uh, I did click Fake Out there as kind of a gentlemanly type deal there because I know it's very frustrating to miss Focus Blast. And you guys have seen my matches in this league. I've had pretty bad luck overall. Uh, so I end up letting Lopunny go down there. And I just go for a Dragon Claw here to get some damage. I wanted to make sure I broke the Skarmori Sturdy if he did decide to switch it in. And now with the third Sturdy broken, I can just go for Fire Blast to take out the Scar. Now he does pull another switch back into Ampharos here. It looks like he's just trying to put some Life Orb Recoil onto my Garchomp. Uh, and I don't really mind that because at the end of the day, Garchomp can kind of 1v1 the rest of his team. Uh, to an extent. I mean, it depends on what he had on Yuxi, if he had Hidden Power Ice or anything weird like that. Because um, I can just Swords Dance up and really, really, really put some damage on for the rest of his team. Now, I did not want to stay in here with Garchomp just in case Yuxi had Toxic. I wanted to make sure Garchomp stayed nice and healthy. And I can switch into Tyranitar, which sets up Sand for my Stoutland. Uh, furthermore, if he had locked into um, the Focus Blast from Nidoking, I do have Choppleberry on my Tyranitar so that he couldn't just Focus Blast my entire team without some risk. Um, strangely, he's faster than my Tyranitar. I, I only put enough speed on there to outrun Hariyama. So since he's faster, that means he's running some sort of speed investment. Uh, but since he is faster, his rest is going to activate before I attack, which really does waste his Chesto Berry. Uh, all he had was a little bit of Sandstorm damage. Uh, but since he wasted that, and now he's in a position where it's going to be pretty easy to revenge kill him, actually. He just U-turns here and goes out into Skarmori, which is great because I get some nice, solid neutral damage and crunch onto Skarmori. Uh, at, it actually turns out um, his Skarmori was not the set that I expected it to be. And I'm not actually going to spoil that set just in case he has another opportunity to use it. Um, if he decides to talk about it in his own video, that's up to him. But uh, I decided to go out into Stoutland right here because I wanted to save um, Garchomp. I didn't want to rely on going for Fire Blast if I didn't have to. And I have Wild Charge on my Stoutland just for Skarmori and for Floatzel if it came up. And he didn't bring Bastiodon. I even put Super Power on Stoutland just in case Bastiodon became an issue. Uh, but that means French Toast picks up two KOs here at the end. We do like French Toast. We like it when French Toast brings us those victories. And that's going to be the end of the battle. So finally, we're back on track with these victories here. The Eternity City Enders are now four and four. Next week's matchup, or this week actually, when you guys are watching this, is up against the Parasect Germain, whom I believe have only lost one battle the entire league. So if we can grab a victory there, that will do a, just wonders for throwing the entire spread of, oh, who's where in the playoffs and that type of thing. So you will hopefully be looking forward to that upload a little bit later this week. And uh, it'll be fun team planning for that team, that's for sure. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye now.